Oh, it's Scott Manley here with a, one, another one of these little random science videos. Now, I'm standing next to the Bay Bridge here. The Bay Bridge is actually uh, on the far side of this, on the far side of that island. That is uh, Yerba Buena Island. On the far side, there is a new section of the bridge being built. It's replacing an old one. It's being opened this weekend. And if I turn around, uh, this is the Soma area of San Francisco, and there's a bunch of places in there. You can probably just see one in the top corner there. Uh, there's a bunch of new buildings being built uh, and this is a, makes this an interesting place to answer this particular question. Somebody asked me, um, with everything the human, uh, human beings are doing on Earth, all the stuff we are building, how is that changing the mass of the Earth and is that going to change our orbit? And the first answer is it's not going to change our mass because what we're doing is we're taking rocks from the ground, melting them down, turning them into all sorts of raw materials and then we're building stuff with them. We're not actually take creating matter out of anywhere. We are actually redistributing things. We're kind of, by taking a building and making it go upwards, you are essentially increasing the moment of inertia, which means you could in theory expect the earth to slow down a little. On the other hand, we are knocking down mountains and doing other things. And it's probably, it's a wash either way. Really, a human activity doesn't change the Earth's mass by any significant amount. For it, but it does happen. I mean, for example, we sent missions into space, and we've lost a, you know, sent hundreds of tons of stuff into deep space that's never coming back. Um, every year, we're using right now about 120 petawatt hours of electricity, and if you do the mathematics on that, that turns out to be about five tons of matter, according to E equals mc squared, and that is essentially radiating off into space ultimately. So in that way, we're taking energy that was deposited on the Earth and converted into mass in the form of chemical bonds and then liberating it back into deep space. So, you know, yeah, we're now reducing the mass of the Earth by a few tons every year, let's say. Now, uh, that is smaller than actual background processes that happen due to just natural physics, for example, um, there's about a thousand tons of space dust, meteorites, and various other uh, extraterrestrial material that simply falls to Earth on a daily basis. But uh, on the other direction, you have atmosphere loss, right? In the upper atmosphere, hydrogen atoms are getting kicked out into deep space and they are escaping off and never to return. We're losing a couple of hundred tons of hydrogen and helium every day. And at that rate, the Earth will probably be a dry Mars-like desert in a few billion years or so, which means there will be no tides. And hopefully before then, we'll have moved on and figure out what to do with ourselves. But yeah, ultimately, uh, the orbit of the Earth probably isn't being modified in any significant or detectable way. Now, it might be possible to detect the variations due to another mass change. If you look at the sun, it's burning hydrogen into helium in its core, and every second it's converting 4.3 million tons of matter into energy. And that way its gravity is similarly being re uh, reduced. So over long enough time periods, that should actually be detectable as a change in orbits all throughout the solar system. But I'm not sure if anybody has actually come up with an experiment that would detect that. But regardless, you know, that is really where the, the solar system is losing its mass. It's losing 4 million tons per second, just converting matter into energy. And so with that, I'm leaving you. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.